Primer. Defending Winston Cup champion Dale Earnhardt. Trying to win this Bush Clash for the fourth time. And this is only his sixth performance in it. If he is going to, Mark Martin is going to make a move, he needs to do it heading into turn three. He can't wait until he starts out of turn four. He wouldn't have time, I don't think. He'll need the help of Rusty Wallace. Will he get it? Martin tried to move out of turn number two. Earnhardt was there, moving to the outside. Now back to the bottom. Here they come, final lap. $35,000 at stake. 13th annual Bush Clash coming to the line. Wallace has pulled that Pontiac up into third. Coming to the line. Chevrolet, Ford, Pontiac, wheeling down for the checkers. And at the line, no question about it, Dale Earnhardt is the winner and the man to beat in next week's 500. We'll be back with more in a moment. And Strickland is rolling right up, Michael, to make another challenge. Petty coming with him. Front three to decide the one under 25. Down to two laps to go. Strickland still running low. Dave Allison running just a little bit higher in the corner net. Is that just to unbind the car a little bit, you think? It could be, and maybe the car is just not uh, handling perfect that it'll keep it down on the inside, but certainly it has been handling good enough to stay out front all the way. And there's trouble over Strick in turns one and two. Strickland's waving, man. Three and four, rather. Car Dorsey number 20. Schrader. And Dorsey Schrader. Sammy Swindell in car number 20. World of Outlaw Sprint Car Champion, front end gone. This one's going to come to the line right hey. now, battling. Here comes Petty down to the inside lap car in front of him. No place to go. Davey Allison's coming for the win. Richard Petty drops on the inside. A charge to the line. Too close to call. Yes, sir. The NASCAR cameras will have to decide that one. In fact, about the only daylight here as it's nearly pitch dark as we go into turn one for the last time. Final lap is underway. Let's see if Ernie Irvin has anything more. Spark said, coming up, Burns car very, very low. At this late stage in the race, obviously no problem with his tires going off. Kyle Petty moves in, closes up, picks up a draft with number four and tries to close on number three. Yeah, you wonder, is Earnhardt running out of gas? He pulled to the inside to, to sort of block them, but maybe that was just a, a move to keep them from trying to draft by on the inside. Out of turn number four, Kyle Petty looks outside. Here they come from Earnhardt's vantage as they come to the line, switching back and forth. It is Petty, but it's Earnhardt to the line first. Ernie Urban in second, Kyle Petty in third in the second 125-mile qualifier. And there's trouble off the turn two. Ernie Urban's, or rather, Ernie and, Urban in front and Earnhardt. And Davey Allison, Davey Allison, and then... Dale Earnhardt and Davey Allison, both out of this race. Ernie Urban racing back to the line with a big advantage. There's Davey Allison's car coming to a stop. Ernie Urban coming down. If it finishes here under caution, it'll be the first Californian to win this race since Marvin Panch back in 1961. Ernie Urban's number four streaking across the line. Rest of the field coming by. Ernie Urban coming to the line and will win the 33rd annual 500 at about 55 miles an hour. Thank you. Hand out and waving. Urban. And this surprising, unbelievable finish to the 500. To the strike. White flag is out. Rudd goes to the inside. Makes his move. Ricky Rudd of that Waddell Wilson power. Here comes Earnhardt back on the outside. Ricky Rudd hangs her low. Wallace looking on from about four car lengths back, back straight away. Earnhardt has the advantage into three, stays high. Here comes Rudd, one more try, pulls up on the inside. Down they come to the line. It will be Earnhardt's 49th Winston Cup win by less than a car length over Ricky Rudd. Same owner, Felix Sabati, same team manager, Gary Nelson. And same engine builder, John Wilson, as one year ago. New sponsor, new colors, and white flag for Kyle Petty. Johnny Richardson was telling me earlier, Mike, that they, they won something like $700,000 for the year last year. That one car won over $400,000. And in the back straightaway, well ahead of Kenny Schrader by about a second and a half. Here comes Kyle Petty out of turn number four to face Doyle Ford's checkered flag and win the Goodrich 500. 1.1 second.
Ricky Watt from Chesapeake, Virginia, is on the final lap. It'll be the first win for a driver from the state of Virginia in Darlington since Joe Weatherly won the Rebel 300 back in 1963. Expect Kenny Martin to know that fact. <laughs> Ricky Rudd. This will be his eighth, make that 12th, Winston Cup win. He's only got about a couple hundred yards to go. Here he is, offer corner number four. Ricky Rudd wins the Trans South 500 at Darlington. The white flag is out. One more lap to go for Rusty Wallace. Let's see how he handles the traffic ahead of him. Bill Elliott is right there. Rusty Wallace moving high off the second corner. Leading down the backstretch. Ernie Irvin will try to make a final move. He taps Rusty. Here they come off the corner. They're side by side. It looks like Rusty Wallace is going to win by about a half a car length. Oh, another exciting Bristol finish. Just one more time around the 5 8 mile oval at North Wilkesboro, North Carolina, and Daryl Waltrip will win his first race in September of 1989. There's Jeff Hammond, who has already been named the mechanic of the race, hoping that his driver can hold on for just a half lap. Now he's in turn number four. Daryl Waltrip comes down and wins the first Union 400 at North Wilkesboro. Wide flag this time. One more lap around this racetrack at Martinsville, Virginia for Dale Earnhardt looking for his 50th career Winston Cup win. The tremendous crowd on hand this afternoon is on its feet. They're cheering for Dale as he brings the Goodwin Chevrolet off of turn number four, heads for the checkered flag, and there it is! Dale Earnhardt wins at Martinsville! Oh, Mast is high on the racetrack and Harry passes him. Wow, now this may affect well, Harry. Well, not out of gas. I don't know. Maybe he's going to try to push him. Maybe he Harry knows. out of gas. Maybe you can't Harry. Do that. You can't do that. That's not legal. Maybe Harry knows he has enough fuel and wants to help his partner make it to the finish. Well, in any case, the white flag is out for Harry Gant. One more lap to go. Will he make it? He sets the car into turn number one for the final time. And the fans that came here on this Monday to watch this race are up and cheering for the 51-year-old from Taylorsville, North Carolina, showing the younger guys how it's done. Now, he has been warned that Rick Mass cannot push that car to the finish line. He has to cross the line on his own. Is he doing it right now, or is it a tight draft? I think it's just a tight draft. I don't know. Well, they're separated, so Harry is still on the gas, and he's got some in it. Here he comes off of corner number four. Remember, the start finish line is way down past the trial. He's out of gas, I do believe. Coast, I believe he can coast the rest of the way. Can he do it? Can he coast the rest of the way? Well, is that one car pushing him now? That's close. Nope, they're one separated. They're separated at this moment. Here comes Harry Gant down for the checkered flag, and he wins it. And Rick Mast moved to the inside to make sure that NASCAR saw that he was not pushing him. Here's the other battle. Daryl Waltrip, it appears, is going to win the battle for second position. He finishes second. Dale Earnhardt is third. Here comes fourth, fifth, and sixth. And seventh. Marlon, Waltrip, Jeff Bodine, and Ken Schrader finish in that order. Let's go to John Curran, who's with Andy Petrie. White flag, nose been up on car number 90. Here's number 30, Michael Waltrip, Sterling Marlin second, Huck Strickland in third as they get down to decide it. Davey Allison getting set to run off the pole. In the Winston this afternoon, Michael Waltrip will be looking from 17th position if he hangs together through this final fourth and very difficult turn. Like the hoopty doos at a moto cross course. All of this simply to make the field, and Michael Waltrip's done it. They know that make the track a little slick, slicker. The fight play. Final lap is underway, and once again the mists have settled in. A little sprinkle in the air as we get down to finish this one. The drama is the battle with the weatherman as Davy Allison pops up out of the hole in turn number two. Drag races down the back straightaway. Davy Allison headed for victory. And Ernie Irvin Smith coming off the turn two almost spun out. 
And Bill Elliott won that battle, but Michael Walsh was about to pass him as Davey Allison comes to the line. Davey Allison is going to take it home. He's going to win. Second place is going to Schrader. Third spot to Waltrip. Fourth to the number nine of Bill Elliott. And what about fifth? Well, it was a, it was almost a dead heat, but I think the number four car got it. It was just maybe by six or eight inches. That car has been so dominant for a month, not a week or so. This thing's been here for two or three weeks, and they have just been unbeatable. Close so many times. It doesn't count for anything in automobile racing. For this moment, as he comes around to win his ninth Winston Cup event, this day, this entire month of May, in Charlotte, North Carolina, has belonged to the Alabama game. Davey Allison has done it, and he's done it in style. One to go. Kenny Schrader out of turn number two, seeking his fourth Winston Cup victory, all on Super Speedway. Dale Earnhardt into turn number three, knocks it down to about a dozen car lengths, but it won't be enough. Ken Schrader wins the Budweiser 500. Is this the checker or the white flag? I've lost track. And coming up on the white flag, Benny. Here they are. One is there. 11. Oh, and Davey Allison has spun. Oh, Ricky Rudd now has the lead. All kinds of contact here in the last few laps. And the white flag flies for Ricky Rudd. running in third position and this will be his best finish of the year if he does take the checkered flag there he has recorded two fourth place finishes in 1991 at Darlington and at Bristol but the third that he's running here today will be his best of the year Darrell Walter now sets up for turn number three for the final time this afternoon the Western Auto Chevy looking for his second victory of 1991 into turn number three Keeping the car low on the racetrack, now coming off the corner. Sees 
wins the checkered flag, and Darrell Waltrip wins the champion spark plug 500 here at Pocono. Earnhardt second, followed by Mark Martin, then Harry Gant, Jeff Bodine, Ernie Irvin, Ken Schrader, Sterling Marlin, Morgan Shepard, and Derry Cope. Let's go to Jerry Punch with Jeff Hammond. I don't think there's any question but what he has made a big difference, and Davey is quick to tell you that, too. He said he brought so much stability uh, among the personnel there. Everybody likes Larry McReynolds, and he's a sharp individual. Came over from the Kenny Bernstein team, as we said, back in the first of April. By 11th, this will be one of the biggest leads anyone has ever enjoyed this track, and it's still about 11 seconds. Can you imagine that? And it's one of the biggest leads we've seen in a while in Western Cup racing. 400 miles. And 11 seconds will settle it at the end of the distance. And it will be Davey Allison one more time as he comes around. Checkers are about to be unfurled. And the winner of the Michigan 400 is Davey Allison. Davey Allison scoring his 11th Winston Cup success, his ninth Super Speedway victory. A big time for Robert Gates and company. He receives the white flag. There's one more left to go. It's been 20 races since Bill Elliott was last in victory lane. That was at Dover in September of last year. He moves, it looks, even further away from Jeff Bodine as he takes the car off the 31 degrees of banking in turn two and heads down the flat pack stretch. Bill Elliott goes to the inside trying to break that draft and trying to leave Jeff Bodine in his wake. He now takes the car again into the banking, 31 degrees in turns number three and four. Bodine looking about seven or eight car lengths behind. Elliott has the car right on the bottom of the racetrack. Here they come into the tri-oval. Bill Elliott from Dawsonville, Georgia heads toward the checkered flag and he gets it. Elliott wins. The white flag has been displayed. Rusty Wallace will apparently win this race. The only question at this point is, does he have enough fuel to make it back to the line? Now, for two laps when the cars went out there, Dale Earnhardt, who has lined up right behind him, pushed him for quite a distance around this racetrack. The NASCAR rule says, however, you cannot be pushed on the white flag lap. These guys absolutely think of everything. Rusty had Earnhardt push him all these caution laps until the white flag lap. Then he started the car up and he followed the pace car. That's within the rules. But right now, again, Rusty has not received any assistance on this white flag lap. And here comes the field down uh, through the uh, pit road. They're following the pace truck, and this will be the end of the race. The checkered flag is being displayed now by Doyle Ford, a yellow and a checkered flag simultaneously. And Rusty Wallace has won in the Miller Genuine Draft-sponsored car, the Miller Genuine Draft 500. It's been an afternoon of... Crashes, a lot of crashes in the first half of the race. No driver was injured, however. Then we got into a rain situation that delayed this event by more than two hours. With 24 laps to go, the track finally dried. The cars were put out on the racetrack. But just as they went out on the track, it began to rain again. They ran three laps, and Rusty Wallace was able to nurse his car home and win this Miller Genuine Draft 500. Here are the front four. Last lap is underway. Earnhardt looking for his 51st win, his 29th Super Speedway win. Can he stay there? Here's Elliott in the nine. Chevy in front. Ford in second. Ford in third. Chevrolet in fourth. At 195 miles an hour, they approach the third and fourth turn for the final time. Dale Earnhardt just shovels it in. Turns it sideways, feels that car just begin to lift under him a little, and he pulls away by a car length. Here come the Fords, closing on the outside. Mark Martin now trying to help Bill Elliott as they close. Here they come for the tri-oval. The final few moments of the race. Here's Elliott coming up to the high side. He's not going to make it. He comes to the inside. He's pulled a throw to the inside that did not work. It was too late. Dale Earnhardt has done it again. Well, what a race. And the white flag is being displayed to Ernie Irvin. And Mark Martin tries to get on the inside. 
His baby Allison Mark is going to try to outbreak him down here. Oh, they're alongside. They're side by side. And Mark has to jam on the brakes. Yep. And he spins. And also the 28 car spins. Mark Martin and Davey Allison both spin in turn number one, the second and third place cars. Mark just went in a little too hard there on the inside of Ernie Irvin in a bid for the lead. I thought he had the corner made, but as he came out, the car got around on him, and Davey Allison also had to stand on the brakes and spin, and that's going to give the victory, apparently, to Ernie Irvin. And Davey Allison just now got his car going as Richard Petty comes off the corner, and Richard goes by. Richard Petty is going to have a very, very good finish here this afternoon. And Ricky Rudd is also going to benefit from this, not only in terms of uh, where he finishes in the race, but of course the all-important points that he will gain. Now here is Ernie Irvin in the Kodak Film Chevrolet coming off of corner number six, headed for the final corner here at Watkins Glen International. Here he comes, Ernie Irvin receives the checkered flag and wins the Budweiser at the Glen. Ernie Irvin from Modesto, California wins his second event of the year and his first since the Daytona 500. They both slide up the racetrack and here they come for the white flag. One more lap to go and Allison has a slight advantage on Jared as they head for turn number one. But remember, Dale's been going well on the inside. He doesn't have the right line though, Bob. Davey Allison keeps his car in the middle of the racetrack. Dale Jarrett's car is on the low side. Off the 18 degrees of banking, they go down on 5 degrees of banking, and Dale Jarrett wiggles a little bit as they come out of the second corner. They bump, they touch, they rub, going down the back stretch, side by side, wheel to wheel. Who is it going to be in the Champions Park Club 400? Jarrett has the slight advantage as they go into the third and fourth corners. Davey Allison battles back on the outside. It's going to be a photo finish. They touch coming down through the trioval at the line. Who wins it? I believe it's Alba. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> goes it. Oh, wow. Dan Woo. Jarrett won it, but it was a photo finish. He didn't win by more than four or five inches. I tell you, fellow. <laughs> When he wins his first one, I want him to do it that way, racing for it. <laughs> and he waves to Davey Allison saying, nice race. Doyle Ford has the white flag in hand. Here it is for Alan Kowicki. Only one more time around this .533 mile oval. And Alan Kowicki will have his first victory of 1991. In the third and fourth turns now. He has survived the Bristol High Banks, and Alan Kowicki wins the Bud 500. Doyle Ford has the white flag in hand. Now he waves it, and Harry Gant passes underneath the starter stand with 1.3 miles to go before he wins his second Southern 500. Harry Gant from Taylorsville, North Carolina, 51 years old. This will give him two Southern 500 victories, and it will give him four total wins here at the track to come to Tay. Harry Gant comes off the fourth corner. The crowd is on its feet. They're cheering for him. Harry Gant wins the Southern 500. The white is out on the track for Harry Gant. If he could just keep her between the fences now, he'd be a good shake in. Came into this race ninth in the standings. What a run to the finish this year in Atlanta. Harry Gant can keep this streak going. Here he is coming around for the final time. Checkers about to be thrown, and it's Harry Gant flying to victory. Two in a row for the first time in his Winston Cup career, defeating Davey Allison in a real slugfest. Here's your third-place car. Rusty Wallace didn't win that $120,000 bonus, so now they'll have another $7,600 as they roll down to Dover, Delaware for the next Winston Cup event. White flag for Harry Gant. <laughs> In half a lap, Gant will move into sole possession of 29th on the all-time win list. Two wins behind Marvin Pan, three behind Curtis Turner, and Neil Bob. White flag. Turn three, gold at it all, Leo Jackson and 
Precision Products team, Andy Petrie, and the crew. Checkered flag, Harry Gant has won three in a row. Four wins this season, his best year ever in Winston Cup racing, his 15th career victory. Here's Gant with the white flag. One more lap to go for 51-year-old Harry Gant and his fourth consecutive Winston Cup win. We have seen history made here this afternoon and what Harry has done. He puts the car into turn number three. He now sees the checkered flag from Doyle Ford. Here it is. Gant wins the Goodies 500. In his career, white flag is out for Dale Earnhardt. Gant maintains second, followed closely by Morgan Shepard. The question now is, is Harry going to be able to hang on for second spot as Earnhardt is at the end of the backstretch? Earnhardt brings the car off of corner number four. Dale Earnhardt wins the Tyson Holly Farms 400. Gant does finish second, followed by Morgan Shepard, Davey Allison, Mark Martin, Rusty Wallace, and Brett Bodine. It's been a real chessboard out here this afternoon. Tim Brewer is a master player. White flag coming out and one remaining. If it'll make it down the back straightaway, the straightaway is where it's going to run out of fuel. If it'll make it down the straightaway, it's going to pick up some more in the corner. He can get there. If he can just get to the end of the back straightaway, he can get that last ounce out of it. You can pack up that Sears Craftsman kit and give it to Tim Brewer, that crew chief on that car. It's some savvy move. If he can hang together here, he's going to bring him home and give Bodine his first victory. 1991, it's going to happen at the Mellow Yellow 500. The checkers are out, and the winner is Bodine. Car right behind him is Harry Gant. One lap car, Jimmy Henson. Davey looks up high, and Hensley had the racetrack. Harry Gant will close in, and he's being a tough car to lap. Gant is within eight car lengths. As they come off turn four for the final time, Davey Allison will win the AC Delco 500. Here he comes, one to go. White flag from Doyle Ford on the flag stand. Final circuit. You know, we could have made a picture of that car about halfway and just showed it over and over because the car had never moved out. It never got sideways or pushed or anything. Still be in question. A lap car separates Walter from Marlin. Coming out of turn four for his 13th career Winston Cup victory, Davey Allison wins the Pyroyal 500. One more lap to go for Mark Martin, who a year ago at this time lost out in his bid to win the Winston Cup. And when the season began, everyone thought that the Jack Roush team and Mark Martin would be a serious contender for the Winston Cup in 1991. But it hasn't happened that way. Mark came into this race today sixth in the Winston Cup points without a victory. He is, however, now within about a half a lap, less than that, a quarter of a lap from his first win of 1991. Here he comes off the corner. The checkered flag waves and Mark Martin wins the Hardys 500. Now, here's the battle for second position as they come to the line. Ernie Urban and Bill Elliott. Elliott pulls alongside. It's Urban, however, at the line, finishing second. There's the Jack Roush crew celebrating Mark Martin's victory here in Atlanta today. I talked to Jack Roush, the, the owner of this car down in the garage area this morning and he said we desperately want to win this race today of course there were a lot of other people didn't do but i don't think there was anyone who wanted to win it more than this team and he has done it mark martin pulls out a victory and makes it the first win of 1991 in the very last race of the season and of course the 1991 winston cup champion who clinched that long ago dale earnhardt will be back to talk with both of them in a moment 